Welcome to Oh Brother, a podcast of three brothers trying to figure it all out. With your hosts, Brandon, Colin, and Aaron. On this week's show, Science Side Quest. Ahoy! 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 I, uh... <clears throat> Sorry, I have some echinacea tea and honey. Or is it honey with echinacea tea at this point? Who knows? Uh, oh, Who knows? Hold oh, on, well. You know, either one of those things is probably fine. So it's, okay. <laughs> it's hot! <laughs> hot! <laughs> that is how tea yeah. turns out it works. I, uh, was traveling about... Uh, traveling is, uh, to the across service areas today and it's, it's, it's fine. It's, it's okay. Like I, this, the drive is very easy for me now, but there are times where I'm like, I wish, I wish it was going to someplace like more fun at this point. <laughs> like, like I hate that sounds weird, but it's like, uh, I guess it'd be nice if, uh, why didn't we set up a remote location in, I don't know, like Aruba or something like, ah, uh. I mean, that can be next, but like, <laughs> kind of, I feel, like, I feel like that's, well, that's just, that just happens whenever you get, whenever you do this, like the same thing over yeah. and over and over again. Right. That's where, again, this is where I am in, with school currently. It's just like, uh, it's the same it's, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Always, yeah. So it's that end of the year, like. So that's you know, it's just the same drive. You did mix it up going to Louisiana, but you know, not in like a (laughs) fun way. So that would be. (laughs) It was your destination was more interesting. Your journey was worse. So it was (laughs) nominally it was supposed to be more funner, but (laughs) realistically. It wasn't. It was True. not. Not so. Yeah, uh, was out doing that kind of stuff today. Did some interviews, so my voice is shot. Uh, also had uh, a, a working lunch with a friend who I had not seen since high school graduation. Uh, oh, there yes. You go. Now they reached out to me and they were like, you know, I, I we just started a, our own business, and you're really the only one that I'm kind of connected to that has done that same thing. And I was like, boy, howdy. Let me tell well, I don't know if you want to talk to me right now because I'm a bit jaded, but <clears throat> sure. Uh, let's, yeah. let's <laughs> buckle up. Uh, and so we, and I, I felt terrible because uh, we went to a restaurant and we we're supposed to meet at 1130. They were running late. It's fine. They show up. We're 15 minutes out from being sat. And I have, so 1130, I had an in-person interview scheduled for one o'clock. Okay, the the two locations are seven minutes apart. I should be fine, right? Like, uh huh. No, no. no. Yeah. Shortly <laughs> after we were sat, a uh, party of eighteen was sat. <clears throat> oh, it, with which all of the available. Uh, oh my gosh, my throat. Sorry. <clears> throat> Ugh, that's what people tune in for. All yeah, of the available indeed. staff uh, was diverted to, rightfully so. You have eighteen people. Uh, you can't lose that for table. Lunch. Yes. I mean, I guess a bigger, bigger business working lunch. I suppose. I did, no, like, this was like a family thing. Like there was, it was family, family coming in. So I was like, ah, yeah. so all of this was diverted over there. It took us forever to get ordered. I'm not complaining because they, whatever. It just, all of a sudden my hard out was 1245. Okay. Yeah. It's 1240. I don't have food yet. Oh no. <laughs> And so I'm like frantically checking my watch and the person with I was with was like, you, we, you just need to take this to go. And I was like, that's what I think is going to happen right now. And yeah. I, so <laughs> I didn't even get it plated. I just said, I don't know where it is in the process, but could you throw it in a box? I need, I, I, I really have to leave. And uh, they got theirs in a box too. I paid and ran from this <laughs> and uh, <laughs> b- like slid into my interview with a minute to spare. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I'm running behind today. Uh, so that's always fun when that happens. But yeah, the person was like, so what do you think of, what do you think of, uh, of networking groups? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have opinions. <laughs> I don't know. Like they're 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 have you going to do a moose lodge. That's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I I am known as Larry Guy. I That's don't know true. if you know this. Uh, You're talking to the Larry Guy right here. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> um, and I, they they opened their own uh, law practice, and so I was like, "Look, oh, okay, uh, that's a little different." But you like, know, this is a bit different. Just so that we're all clear on this, is um, I my company walks dogs. You are like you know suing people uh yeah. and it's like of the professional professions it's like way up there so <laughs> your 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 networking may be more important but uh they're like yeah i just don't feel like i get much out of them and so it's a bunch of wasted money they're paying for their memberships too that was the annoying i was like you're paying oh. for these memberships and because there is one out there i'm just going to go ahead and name drop this one uh business networking international bni um they are a networking group and they, oh my gosh, they have so many annoying things. It's a paid membership. Plus you have, yeah, like, you have an attendance policy where if you don't attend, they will kick you out. But here's why. Is it like X number of attendance or like every, is it like every single event is mandatory? I wonder, <laughs> yes, it I wonder is, if it's like a percentage of things. It It is. Um, and you can send a, uh, a designated representative if you cannot be there but mm. they have to you can't just send anybody and say that they're with you like you, they have to be pre-documented on the forms that you fill out to sign up for uh, this yeah. thing and i i understand Boy. like i understand this i know what they're trying to do however uh the mandatory attendance thing is a real killer and uh yeah. here's why people love being in bni it is an exclusionary uh, i mean yeah network, right like it, such yeah, that it's such that if if we were to become members, no other pet sitting company be, could could become a member of BNI in what? that chap in that chapter. So mm, people that, that. like getting in early with a new chapter, and then they never let go. I feel like this is counterproductive to the networking <laughs> concept, right? Like if you, <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you want to. If you want to meet with people who are like you by excluding no, no. <laughs> everyone else that is like yes. you, you no. have defeated the whole entire point of the exercise. Which is which is why I was invited to one of these. Oh, and you get like like bonus Uber gold points or coins or whatever. I don't know if you invite people and they become a member under you, right? But you so you have to be a sponsored to become uh. a member. It, kind of thing and so people are constantly asking like do you want to come do you want to come i went to one because like oh sure let me learn about this it is it is like oh great i can come in and i can see the plumber or the realtor or a banker it's yeah, so poor it's so, so not that's it's, super unhelpful right like and yeah and they all show the same wee, like wee bit pyramidy right like oh no it, bring your friends no and you'll take like coins based on how many friends you it's a cult is what it is like it's what it is <laughs> it's it's like i know what this is you're a cult uh, <laughs> and I, yeah I, is I, the guy I, in charge wearing a strange beaded necklace by any chance yeah. because puka that's... shells maybe yeah. uh so i i attended and it was very unhelpful um it sounds uh, it sounds like the most unhelpful thing in the history of the world because it here's the thing terrible. it's like what do you do? Okay, after you've attended one time, who are you networking with? Tell me. Yeah, who, you've who? You've done it all. I t- you've met the check, guy. Check. I have all of your cards. You have all of mine. I know nobody is changing next week. I'm done, right? Like I will just call you. Uh <laughs> cuz phones are a thing, right? Like this is just I t- So I explained that like Oh, and they're like, oh, and I'm, I, there's so, so many network rooms. And it is true. Springfield, I know it is about that. I was sitting in a coffee shop getting ready to go to my networking group that we go to there. And there was a lady in the coffee shop talking to a friend about starting a new networking group for businesses. <laughs> See, <laughs> but, it, but it was going to be, it was going to be different. Weird. It wasn't going to be the same. It's not going to oh, be they're like, all going to be different. Gonna, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. It's like the they're restaurant. They're all not like other girls. <laughs> Right, like, just, <laughs> or I don't know if you've been to a, a restaurant where they're like, we do things a little different around here, and you're like, no, really, you don't. really, do you? No, just an orangutan come and give me my food. I, yeah. I don't think so. Right, I do I order I to the food, you bring it to me. <laughs> yeah. I pay for services rendered. Yeah. Done. Done. That's not yeah. different. Like, no, that's what, literally what everybody else does. So, uh, there is a mass amount of things. So, I was, I really encourage them to get in a 
career or industry specific networking group um if if they were looking for something like that but to instead focus time on 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 building out on their own like whatever their specialty is right yes. because like lo- yeah. lawyers specifically usually they will have like they will specialize in something right mm-hmm. now they a lot of them will always they'll do like defense work for people like you know here and there and whatever and then like or they have to represent people in court on like certain types of cases so your your best bet really is to decide which ones are your speciality since there is like just legal code and laws and stuff is the most confusing network ever so you can't do all of them well yeah. no right? you don't so do you have all to have like law. your yeah. your niche right <laughs> People don't think about that, right? Like when you go to a doctor, right? You you do have to go to like an orthodontist or a podiatrist, right? It's not the yeah. same doctor. For law stuff, it's similar, right? For like family court issues, it's a guy. And a lot of times for like personal injury or like workers' comp or whatever, it's a different guy, <laughs> right? For like trusts and like wills and stuff it's often a third guy so yeah it's i think that is lost because there's you know we know about personal injury attorneys because there's those commercials on television yeah. um although ask your friend uh to do some digging into uh beetle and musgrave what happened to the other two where did they go what oh, happened to those guys mystery you know, they probably re- they probably retired but um, and just gave the whole I'm, practice over you know uh but <laughs> where the mystery of the Shimps and Musgrave. What happened to them? Oh, I don't know. Man, that, that, okay, that was like a plumbing of the depths of like my memory when you said those right? of like, right? oh my shrimps, beetle, and Musgrave. Wow. Yeah, okay. We were watching TV the other day and they, they had two of those guys are still there. Like, Whoa. <laughs> so, yeah, this Who is knew? what I, rec- this is what I recommend it because, because people will come to them and go, do you do defense or I got in a car accident. Can you help me? You're an lawyer. If that's yeah. what people do. That is exactly what people. And you have to go, no, um, you go over here. So you have to go find other people in that industry so that when they come with, cause you know, people are coming to them and going, do you do elder you do law, tax law, like, right? tax no. law <laughs> employment law? Do you do what law? They're going to go, no, but I know this person who does. Yeah, so, exactly. I, I told them that's what you have to focus on is getting plugged into that network and stop trying to go to business networking groups with a banker and somebody who owns a weird franchise and somebody who's actually, you know, like they sell pe- glass earrings and pendants kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like the, those people are not that they're not wonderful people and it, it's not worth your time to get to know them, but it's just not helpful for you to do business. Right. right. If you're at a business, that's a different networking. That's like a social networking thing. Yes. Right. Where you just want to like meet new people because there is like, there is a validity in that prospect, right? Certain things. This is what I've been thinking about this week, right? There are certain times where it's very important to draw inspiration from the wider field around you. And like, even if it's not directly associated with what you're doing, there are things that other people do or things that you'll see or whatever that will inspire you to be like, oh, that gives me an idea. I could incorporate this in some way Mm -hmm. into my life, right? So that's important you don't want to narrow your focus so much that you're only thinking about like the one exact thing that you do because then you're then you're also missing out on a lot of other opportunities i think well but that's just how my brain works right i'm a very like broad net type of person and so like i have trouble pinpoint focusing on like (laughs) (laughs) it is it is hard to know how to direct your attention like that. That is very true. And it is one of those things that you struggle with. I know I personally struggle with as well as going, okay, how, not just what do I focus on today, but how do I know what to focus on today? And oh, yeah. uh, I view the networking as very different things of, am I like the, the, the ones where it's just a, a, a you know, a, a cornucopia of a variation of people from backgrounds and businesses. 
I view that kind of networking as more direct marketing to them, like that person. Like uh, I'm going yeah. there so that they maybe they will use my services. I don't expect the banker to be my number one referral source for my services. I, d- I just don't. Right? I don't I mean, yeah, think that that's, that's going to drive sense. a whole lot. <laughs> But that's good. That's going to, that's going to, I mean, those are fewer seeds sown there. The real but, estate agent, however, is a wonderful, right? They are they yeah, fantastic. So, like, <laughs> that is who I, um, uh, who, who I would focus on. Um, but like also getting connected with just other people in the industry, they're actually going to drive a higher percentage of my referrals to back to me because naturally when people are at the groomer, they're going to ask about a pet sitter or what to do with their dog when they travel naturally. Right. Or naturally when they're at the, 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 uh, the, the um, trainer that's going to come up. So as a lawyer or whatever the industry is, you have the people that are, that are bre- that kind of connected to you in some tangential way, tangential way of there's some reference back to you and you can refer out to them in an easier manner other than like, like, Nobody comes to me, a pet sitter, and goes, do you have a good banker? Yeah. <laughs> just, but the inverse is going to be true with you. Or like, whenever you are sitting a pet and someone's like, man, I haven't got his haircut. The person I know quit. Do you know anybody that cuts, yeah. that does like pet grooming? And you can be like, well, well why, yes, I do. Right? Like, that's almost- yes, ex- exactly. <laughs> so it, it builds a lot, a community a lot faster than just going to these really broad, disparate kind of yeah. networking community events. <clears throat> and again, not that those aren't important. You know, I, I think that it's still good to be viewed as a member of your community, just even as a, just as, as a person of going, Hey, here's the, here's a parade. Like I want to go be in a parade. I'm going to wave to random people. I'm going to do this yeah. kind of stuff. But I also, I'm going to have, think of it as like, okay, that's a broad event of like where a lot of people are going, but we all have our own favorite, like, shops or places that we frequent that we have a tighter connection to that there's more familiarity there so kind of picking and choosing those communities within your community you do have to be strategic about that in in some sense you can't be everywhere all at once but you can invest a little bit in them and you're going to get differential returns from them as well yeah and i i was also not meaning that uh, a person should focus exclusively on broader things, right? There is such a thing as shifting your focus, right? So mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. a new, we're going to stick with lawyer, uh, sure. you do need to focus much more acutely, right? Yep. Much more smaller sphere, right? And then I feel like as you do things and as you become established, then you can cast that net slightly wider and just look at just be kind of aware of other things. Not even like necessarily engage with them directly, but just sort of like, well, be aware of what there are so that you can. Inspiration comes from many places. Oh, I'm trying. To... Uh, no, I, uh, I, so... I, 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 it's important. Uh, you know, one of the things, again, we have one group that we attend when I can. It's called One Million Cups. I've talked about it before. Uh, I like it because it is a. It's, it's approximately a... the number of cups of coffee you drink per day. Per day. Uh, that's yeah. why, that's what actually, that's, there's no, there's no um, membership <laughs> fee, but you do have to prove uh, with receipts, literal receipts, how many coffees you uh, have. Okay. Um, no, I like them a lot because <clears throat> it is a very giving community. Nobody is there. That It is, it's actually written in the meeting and re- re- uh, repeated multiple times of like, you're not here to sales pitch yourself. If you're giving a talk, it is not, you are not pitching your services to each other. You're actually coming with either a problem or something you need help with or uh, to celebrate something that you've done to talk to the group about. And I love that kind of atmosphere. That is so much fun to be a part of. And you do sit there and go, wow, like I, like I'm, I was actually looking at some notes today uh, of a talk I heard given by uh, a lady who wants to start up a mobile smoothie bar in Springfield and the kind of questions that she had, the kind of answers that were given, how do you market that kind of thing in this context where like the, one of the things that they also talked about was like, where do you go to get demographics data to see if that would even be a good idea to mark, to prove your concept for the market. And one lady was like, Oh, I actually um, am the head librarian of the library system. And we have this great software, blah, 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 blah. And you can come and it it plugs into all of the census data and you can slice it 10 ways to Sunday. And I was like, 
I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't know about. There you yeah. go. <laughs> that like that that exposing just you have but in order to get there you do have to position yourself to like okay now i'm ready to be a little bit broader in how i approach this because you can't come with that approach right from the get-go because you'll be you'll no, be lost yeah. and everything right <clears throat> that's true it's a little overwhelming that way because you have to choose what to focus on like in order right there's like yes you can't just be like oh everything so <clears throat> so it's yes but it, it is helpful to eventually be working towards that goal of like, ah, what else is there? What else can I do? What are some other things that are interesting? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, you have to do that process of, okay, who, like, who am, it, it, just in life in general, too, going, who am I, right? Like, <laughs> I've got to yeah. figure out myself first before I start figuring out what's going on or how I interact with a broader community or a group of people right that's that's something that everybody everybody goes through yeah so it's very helpful i've been thinking about some of that recently because it's that time of year also is fourth quarter now so now i'm like yeah i have to start thinking about like what do i do next year right like Mm. it's all more of like a like a refining process like what is something that i need to do to focus on for like just like my next year's like goals and stuff like what should i be thinking about what should i be doing uh and that kind of stuff so that's that's where i'm coming from currently with this broader net i'm looking at like all kinds of things being like whoa what about this no what's over there what's i need something (laughs) is is that in the is that in the context of things that didn't work that you're trying to change or just you personally going what can i okay i did this lesson what what could i do differently or what didn't work or what kind of, uh, not so are you much looking at there? not so micro as in like individual lessons necessarily that's more of like a in the moment type thing right like hmm. type situation like the uh, this year I did a lot of focusing on looking at my like doing a lot better job of like compare comparing like my assessment data and like monitoring it and like looking at the progress we were making throughout the year and like how I could tell if people were meeting the goals that we talked about and that kind of stuff, right? And so I have like these very like like this built up layers right so like the first so where we're st- the starting base for all of this was like the very first year i was teaching i was like we're just gonna go for it mm. and see what happened right that's sort of what it was like i was just like we're just gonna do it <laughs> sure uh and then because when i when i started teaching science they were like the the end of the, the year before they were like hey next year you're teaching science and i was like oh Okay. <laughs> so it was a throwing things at the wall year, right? And then the next year after that was focusing on like, okay, picking out all the important things and sort of building on that, like coming up with your like keystone, like standards and stuff like that. And like, okay, these are the ones that we're really going to focus on and like aligning them with the seventh, eighth grade and all that stuff. Mm. <laughs> and then like, then it was like, this year and last year, last year I spent a lot of time like building better assessments, like quizzes and things like that, right? Like actually building them, rewriting some of them, <coughs> doing things like that. Um, cause I also have on my list, like I have certain like assignments and stuff where I'm like, I need to redo this because it's like I've either bought a resource from somewhere and it's just like not what I want. Like it's, it's almost what I want, but not quite. So I need to fix it <laughs> so, to make it fit what I need it to do. So I have a small list of like, oh, fix this, do this, blah, blah. <clears throat> and then also along with the like better progress monitoring. So this year was more like progress monitoring, like looking at my stuff and being like, okay, here's all my data. Here's my numbers. I can look and see. Here's what everybody scored on their thing, right? Yada, yada. <clears throat> so. I just have to still refine a little bit of that, get it kind of going on there, and then 
Uh, but then now I'm looking for like, okay, I've done all that stuff. Mm. So what do I do next? <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, then what? You know? So. <laughs> yeah, that process of of going, okay, of, of not quite as granular, because uh, you said like that's more in the moment, but these big bucket things of just going, okay, how, how what, what sh- what's the shape of my current assessments? Like all of them. Yeah. And then doing a review of those. Then going, okay, what's this current state of all of my, I don't know, like PowerPoints or yeah, yeah. whatever, like work for processes for these. Like those, those are some of the ones that I would say are often more valuable than the individual lessons or like individual, like day to day. Oh yeah. Cause that stuff can, that, cause that stuff can change and you can be like, that's the stuff where I'm like, Oh, no idea. Today we're doing this instead. <laughs> Throwing out all that other stuff. <laughs> like I had this ready for today, but we'll do that later. Yeah. Right now we're doing this. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I need to get, I need to, I do need to go back and fix some of my, cause I sort of do this thing where like up until like Christmas, like all my stuff is like <laughs> great. Yeah. Right. And then some of my third quarter stuff's like, mm. yeah. Cause I lose. Because when you're focused on something for that longer period of time, I like as the year goes on, I lose motivation to do it because I've been doing it so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, mm. <laughs> I have all these like very good things and like checks and stuff for the first part. And then, then there's a point where I'm like, uh, I kind of lose steam. So I have to kind of, fix some of that stuff but mm. other than that i'm thinking about <clears throat> what what's something else i could add or what can i do or what can i focus on or whatever for for next year so that is my current goal is trying to figure out what on earth <clears throat> i'm going to do right so i have been doing that kind of thing as well <laughs> oh fun yeah we- fun. well here's my here's my current <clears throat> here's my current idea Ooh. Okay. This is still in workshop mode. Okay, Ooh, so I here's like... the current plan. <clears throat> uh, we're going to see how this goes, right? Because you know, they're changing my schedule again next year. Probably they'll do something weird. But anyway, uh, I have a lot of times in my classroom where there's like <clears throat> seven minutes where I have nothing to do. Mm. Which is not uh, amount of time that I can do anything in, <laughs> yeah. right? So, like, I'll be because of the way that I've decided to break down a lot of my stuff. It's like today we're just doing this part, yeah. and some days we'll do like we'll start a thing because I know that the next day will be like a big, we'll like introduce something at the end, and then the next day can be like the whole explanation or whatever. But some days I'm like, okay, we're done with this part. We've done our assignment. We've done our notes. We've had our discussion. Blah blah. I have seven minutes. <laughs> dang it sometimes we can play like a review game from like old lessons just to keep that stuff like in your mind which i should probably do more of that in the fourth quarter i think about it um <clears throat> like little review games from old stuff just to be like hey remember this Blam. uh but i am going to attempt to make some like long form projects where it's like I'm going to introduce them at the beginning of the month and say, mm. this is due on the 20 something. And I'm going to make a big thing on the board and I'm going to give them all the outline. And I'm going to say, have to do it by then. Anytime before you can do it before then, but it has to be done by then <laughs> just so that they'll have like something to be doing. Right. Like, there's, there will be less times of like, well, I don't have anything to do. Yet do though, because yeah, this thing on the board, <laughs> huh? So, this is my well, plan. So we're going to alternate, uh, maybe between some sort of like research based thing, right? So I have to decide if I have to calendar this out. This is where my weaknesses come in. Like I have to look at a calendar Ugh. and. Uh, <laughs> And see, like, planning what I want to do here. I know planning is hard. <clears throat> so, some months are going to be research based. Now, I don't know if I want to make it like science current events and make it like 
which is very broad, so they could pick anything because there's always something weird happening, right? Like crazy. Mm-hmm. Or if I need to make it more like sort of about the unit that we're on, I don't know yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's tough. Um, you I know, mean, it could go. I could do one of you know, one one time, the other another time, but just no mix it my, up. Spice yeah, it a little bit. Yeah, because they do have access to the iPads and stuff, so you could the yeah. current events would be that wouldn't be that hard. And there's lots of websites that are like like sciency news and it's geared towards like middle grade readers. Mm-hmm. Because that is the other problem with science current events is like it's either reported on like Yahoo and it's just like what is this even sentence? I don't even understand what's happening. Did anybody proofread this? No. Or answer, answer it's in like no. <laughs> it's in like live science and it's just like the most technical thing ever <laughs> right and so like a sixth grader is not going to be able to parse <laughs> this <laughs> right like what in the world is happening <laughs> yeah that's that would be really hard and what i like about this and i want to circle i want to come back to the workshop mode thing that you said earlier but like what i like about this is it's just enough time to go do a little bit more Right. Like that's, and that, yeah, what I think, what I think this is really important is not just for filling time in like classroom management, but just like life skills right now. I mean, that's like, what I was thinking about when I'm I like, was talking to some of the other science teachers about this. I was like, here's my plan. Tell me how feasible this even is. What do you think? <laughs> yes. No, it, it's, it's, I think it's really great because I, I mean, I, how often in your own life when you're working in a, like a time slot where you're like, well, um, man, there's a lot on my to-do list. Um, what do I slot into this sh- very short amount of time that either I can quickly accomplish or be take another small chunk out of? And that, because otherwise I know for me, like a lot of times I'll try and wait till I have all, all of the time to just finish a project. And I know yeah. some projects like that's necessary to do because like, like it's kind of like cooking. Like if I took seven yeah. minutes a day to cook a cake or bake a cake, like, that's really not going to work. <laughs> I can't just turn the oven on and off each time I step in. So you do need that. But then there are other ones where it's like, oh, I have a blog coming out tomorrow. Um, if I work on that a little bit every day, that's not you know for the last three days. Then I I'm, I'm that much more ahead by the time I get to when it's actually due. Yeah, exactly. So. That's what I'm thinking about. And I don't know how so the workshopping mode. I don't know the format. I'm envisioning this being something like I really so I have a several assignments that are <clears throat> it's basically inside of a slideshow, right? Mm-hmm. Where there's just like some and I've made some of these too, and they're there's like there's like some information and then there's like whole slides with text boxes that you fill in the blank stuff. Mm. Right. And I'm envisioning something like this to sort of like guide the process to the final steps. Right. Sort of like a, some sort of like, you know, in language arts, when you do like your, your outline stuff, when you're like writing a research paper, you have to like fill in your outline and you like put your, find a place. There's like a spot where you like copy your sources in there. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yep. That I'm envisioning something like that, but like light, light version. Oh yeah, right. <clears throat> Where it's like it's very self. Like all the directions and everything that you need is just there, so that you can just fill in the information that that is there. And then like the last thing could be like a final thing, right? Like a <clears throat> then you'd have like a slide for like. What is the thing behind this? What is your opinion on this? Like, is that, you know, that kind of stuff. You can have, like, different things. So they could work on a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. Like, break it down into, like, chunks. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that what that does is that helps them see what I like about that idea of basically handing them a template of, like, yeah, this is kind of everything template. that you need. Because for me, I was just talking to Megan about this the other day of, like, when I like, I really like cooking because cooking is a process of looking at you have to read the instructions from start to finish and there's a stage there's an order but 
when you get like familiar with it, sometimes you can do the, you can prep for step seven on step two because you're True. already kind of like doing this stuff. So it, it allows you to kind of have the self directed. Once you get comfortable with it, like in the beginning, I'm sure everyone's just going to go, okay, I do step one, oh, yeah. then I do step two. But as they start working through, they can go, oh, I can actually take some of this information right now while I've got the book or I'm on the website and start filling out this ladder part and I have this idea. And it really is like, okay, here's a template, but everybody can use the template differently. And that's yeah, so exactly. cool. So that's, that's what we're going to see of how this works. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is my goal. I don't really know if it's gonna like. We'll see how it goes, but okay. this is my goal. To see, but well, yeah. so 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 you you said that word, uh, workshop mode. <clears throat> uh, I assume that the, another version of that is like production mode or whatever. Like not, not necessarily that, but like how what does what does a workshop mode look like to to you, uh, and how is that uh, different from other other things? Well, I don't know. I use that term very broadly yeah. to think like. I don't like so when I'm thinking about things like this, like I don't think like this is it, this is exactly how it's gonna work, boom done. Mm. Because I don't I am not foolhardy enough to believe that I can foresee any and all outcomes from the beginning. <laughs> right. <laughs> and say like this is the be all end all and this is exactly what it should be. Right. So I always take the approach of uh okay, we're gonna try it out and then we're gonna see how it goes, and then we're gonna see what we need to do from there. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> like we're gonna, gonna give it a test run. We're gonna see it because like I can think about this all day long and I can always I could sit and think about like, oh, this makes sense to me. But then when you give it to a 12 year old, does it make sense to them? Mm-hmm. Nothing makes sense to them, to be honest. So we need to it's fair. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's about like just being able to be like, mm, okay, I need to. It's it's sort of in, it's just the mindset of being like to be able to look at something and go, okay, I need to change something about this to make it more effective. Mm. Right, that's what that sort of phrase means to me. But no, <clears throat> some people will be like, they come up with a thing and they do it, and then like that's just it forever, mm. you know. And so I do like to at least think that I go back and look at stuff and be like, mm, I need to change this because it didn't work out like I wanted it to. <laughs> or why didn't it work out like I wanted it to? Was it my fault? Was I unclear? Was it too mm-hmm. vague? Right? Like stuff like that. So, <clears throat> Well, what I, what I like about that is it is very intentionally a mindset for yourself. Right. Like that's what I hear about that is going, you're giving yourself permission to go. Things can change right now. Right. I am not locking self in anything. We're open to possibilities and we are just trying. There's no wrong or right way to do this. Right. It's like, it's really setting that, setting that because, okay, I am very much the kind of person who's like, well, I have to design a new onboarding process. So the one that I'm about to write on this paper is the be what end all be all version that will live forever. So, I will never write that because I'm too terrified to start putting it to pen to paper, right? Like, that's yeah. exactly what my brain does. Uh, instead of being like, it's not the final one. It's okay. Like, do something wrong and just try kind of thing. Yeah, that's sort of my approach to teaching in general. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how common that is. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I don't really... That's not what other, a lot of teachers, uh, as, like teachers that I work with, right? Like they don't, uh, that doesn't, that doesn't really compute, right? Like the whole, like a lot of teachers that I know, this is not all teachers in the world, obviously, they really like to have like everything like very meticulously planned out before it happens. Mm. Right? Yeah. And I don't. Right, I don't not I don't really care about a lot of the minutia sometimes. It's sort of like the big milestones or things for me. It's like, oh, we'll do this, we'll do this, blah, blah, blah. Fill in the other stuff later. We'll see how it goes. Oh, we're gonna add this here, we're gonna do this. Cause I do that right with my lessons. Mm. Right. Like I said, the first year, that's all I was doing. The whole first year. It was like, all right, here's my plan. It's gonna 
see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, you know, you go through it and you go, okay, I need to add some stuff here and there because it would, you know, not enough. We got to do something else. We got to add little things around and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, so it's, it's always changing a little bit. <laughs> but I, that's just how, I don't know, it's just how I think about things. I don't really know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always just like, mm, yeah, we're going to do this. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, we're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. Not doing that ever again. That was terrible. <laughs> Burn that and get that out of here. <laughs> well, I know, I know with some people they have that they have that idea of um, no, you must commit to something, and I I do get that. It's like okay, so when when the kids were little, we had a lot of you know things come up where they're like, well, I don't know what the problem is. But you need to like, oh, like sleep training. Okay, this is my favorite example of this. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Where they go, okay, sleep training. Here is the thing. There's no one way to do it. Every baby is different. Also, it may change with the baby's age, depending on when you try and do this. So what you need to do is you need to experiment with sleep training methods. But also, you need to be consistent with how you sleep train them and make sure they give enough time to see if it's going to work. But don't be afraid to change it because there's a variation of sleep training techniques. That it's just like this big circular thing of like, yeah, so commit to it, life. give it time, but also change it up because it's not going to work for everybody. <laughs> like you just, I just find feel yourself like that's worded poorly. Right? Circling. Like, in like... the, oh, it's so bad. <laughs> um, I just feel like that's poor wording on their part. Right. Cause I mean, I, the way I really approach this, right. Whenever I was thinking about this is like, I am a science teacher. So, mm. I mean, this is just how science works, right? <laughs> we just yeah, yeah, do fair. a thing and then go, that didn't work. Mm-hmm. What about this thing? <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> Still no? Okay. Yeah. Third thing now, right? Like, sort of that just like uh, a continual iteration process. Right? Sure. It's a very, you know. It is terrifying because I know that a lot of people don't like that, right? A lot of people really like to have a plan before they start. And this is why teacher meetings bore me to no end because they just (laughs) sit around and they all talk about (laughs) how to make the plan before they start. And I'm like, can we start already? Can we just do it? Like, (laughs) yes, I, I, I did frustrated as well and you know i like to i like to have some general guidance or some general like end point or goal to work forward and then we'll just kind of fill in the rest of that like that's i do appreciate that um and i and i do also i do respect people who who need a lot of the fill in the gap kind of things and and we have been i've had to get better at communicating that especially now that we are bringing on staff of like I I am going to focus on the end goal and then like the middle part, just like we're going to figure it out. Uh, but some people cannot operate like that. And it's frustrating to me because I know what they want to know is, okay, what's the first step? And then what is the second step? Not, not what could be a second step or what of the possibility of steps, what one might follow that first one. They don't want to know that. They want to know the actual step. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, like, yeah, I, I can't give that to you. I don't know. <laughs> like, and it's not because I'm trying to withhold any information. It's that I, I actually have no don't clue. know. <laughs> I, I actually have no clue right now. We're going to, when I say we're going to figure it out, I'm not just trying to buy time or be elusive. I'm, I'm literally, I'm, <laughs> this is actually what's going on in my life right now. Like, we have no idea. <laughs> and I know people don't like that. Some people don't. That's fine. They don't. I know, I know a certain person that I live with that <laughs> likes step one, two, three, four, all the way to the end. Can't. Just, that's what they want. They can't figure out who that would be. It's so yeah, weird. I yeah, it's mm. mystery. Mm. Uh, there go. <laughs> yeah. For your safety, we'll move on. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't tell you about the second half of my plan. So, what? oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, yes. That's okay. That was, so here's the 
<clears throat> to augment, augment independent research mode. Mm. The other allotted times, I basically just think about these in terms of months. It probably won't take all months, right? I don't, I'm not envisioning that, but like, whatever. Um, they are going to be interspersed with some sort of like small building thing challenge, right? Like, uh, here's a yeah. box of stuff. You have to make a thing to test by this day. Mm-hmm. Good luck. <laughs> a, a, another great open ended. It also gives them time to, uh, or you get more research time, like yeah. make it much more deliberate. And this would be also accompanied with some sort of like templatey guideline thing of mm-hmm. like write your plan, right? Attach, you know, like here is a sketch your ideas on this paper that you're going to just hand it to me later, right? Like just so I can see what you're doing, like have some steps to follow, not just like go by, see you later, <laughs> 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 right? So, some sort of steps to follow of like research and design stage, right? Uh-huh. Planning stage, and then build it now like now you can start like basically like have like approval steps you know for like you know like r&d projects have that for like do your thing show me but i look at it and i'm i because i am me i'm envisioning just like a checklist right Mm -hmm. (laughs) where i see just like everybody moving to completion of all the checklists right like just columns that they're meeting right right and i would this would probably be a group project I would imagine because this sounds more groupy, but like it's just like these like four stages of design, right? Like, have you done this one? Boom. Okay. You may now proceed. <laughs> to the <next> step. <laughs> oh, have you done this one too? Oh, okay. Now you may go to the next one. <laughs> well, that's a good too of, of yes. In, in some industries there are deliverables that you just have to show of like, Yep, here's the step that I've met, or like here's the thing that I'm working on, and yep, now we're going to move on. The details of what are in what's in that aren't really all that important, but it's a great place to just check in. I used to do this with my yeah. boss when they were like, "Okay, I need you to write a priority watershed, um, like, like twenty year plan given the data that we have, and here are some points where I want you to bring something to me." And was like, first off, that's great because that helps me break it down into something that's much more manageable. Oh, yeah, exactly. Right. It sounds less terrifying that way. Instead of like build a rubber band car right out of this box of scrap material. uh, Like, yeah, looking at this stuff, draw a picture. (laughs) Aha. Okay, I can do that. (laughs) Draw a photo. Um, Yeah. Pretty good. Is, uh, give one like source uh, that you read about what these yeah. like, so, like these things just to prove really that they are doing Looking something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is really what you're what you're trying to do with that, and that's um, I think that's really important to do. Yeah. So we will see how well this all works out. Uh, but this is the plan in the idea stage. I going like it forward. <laughs> so. That's perfect. I, so, I mean, it'd be all right. This, uh, the reason I was thinking about well, thinking broadly, this was actually inspired by a video game I was playing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what? So what? So here you go. The, what video? Yeah, game? So uh, as um, <clears throat> the game I'm playing. So I've been playing through the Yakuza series games. Right here you go. Fun times. I'm on. Uh, I played through Yakuza Zero, which is like the prequel. It's really fun, and I'm on like the first game. It's a remake of the first game. Came out like I don't know. It's a remake of the first game. Um, are, anyway, are you on? Are you okay? Are you on? Okay, I'm looking at. I'm on. I'm playing Yakuza Kiwami. Kiwami. Okay, so yeah. I'm looking at a chronological ordering of re- according to release date. Okay. This yeah. Just, so that is a little confusing. Yes. Um, because. Yakuza released in like it was a PlayStation 2 game. Mm. Right? And then they remade it much later. Yeah. So I'm playing Kiwami, which is, is like 
I played zero, which if you go in the timeline of the games, yeah. is the beginning. Yes. But it was one that was released the one before you yours yeah, you just yeah, now played. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah, this came out totally. originally released in two thousand six. Yeah. Oh the, oh oh geez. They did the okay, Yakuza, <clears throat> then they did two, three, four, Dead Souls, five, then they did zero. Yeah, they did Dead Souls doesn't count. Most people don't play that. It's a okay. weird zombie spinoff. No one cares about that. Okay. Well then we don't care about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then they yeah, then they did zero and then they did like six and then they did seven which is not called yakuza anymore <laughs> mm. uh and then there's also two spin-off games that are like about like uh, just a different dude altogether uh and they're coming out with a brand new one next year allegedly and there's also a second re-release of a spin-off that came out only in japan a few years ago that actually is really weird because it is like all the character models, but it's not the characters, and it's set in like feudal Japan with samurais and stuff. It's really weird. Don't know. Um, yeah, it's okay. Okay, it's whatever. Um, cool. Gotcha. Anyway, <clears throat> Yakuza Zero and Yakuza Kiwami both feature a very robust slot car racing mini game, <laughs> in which, <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. The it's tone not of these where games I thought shift. you were going to take this. I know, right? The tone shifts very like super melodramatic like crime drama uh-huh. plot interspersed with slot car racing mini games on the huh. side right but okay. cool these are like <clears throat> series of things where you have to like you can like find parts as rewards and then you just like continually add and build up your car and stuff in order to continually make it faster to win more and more races to accomplish whatever goal right it's chocobo racing yeah, Chocobo Racing. Okay. Same concept, right? I think one of the spinoff games has drone racing, which is actually kind of sick, right? But mm. That idea of like, okay, you have this thing and you just have to work on it like in the background. Yeah. And like occasionally it comes up and you do a thing, right? That is the thought process that inspired my thinking about this, what to do with these like seven minute chunks of time in my science class. Mm. <laughs> yeah. If you want some terrifying insight on how my brain functions, right? I was like, <laughs> I was thinking like, oh, that's a really cool idea because like, you know, if, if it was something like that, where you was like, imagine it was like a, I don't know, some sort of car design thing, right? Where it was like, you would continually iterate on the thing that you did, right? Over and yeah. over again to like continue to make it better. That'd be really cool. But then I thought that's not really practical. And I don't have room for stuff like that. Like, what am I going to do? Like, get a Pinewood Derby track and put it in my classroom? No, that's not really going to work out, right? That would be, I mean, that'd be neat, but not going to fit. So I need <laughs> something else. <laughs> and so I thought about these like smaller scale projects where it's like, it's like side quest material, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're doing a side quest you have the main goal for class things you have class work you have blah 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 blah, but this is your side quest (laughs) and you (laughs) you have to do by a certain time or you know whatever but it's like the side quest material there you go and and they're very important for gaining xp uh and leveling right because they yeah There you go. No, I, uh, I really like. I like that general concept of of, <laughs> of <clears throat> because there are things that will come up. I mean, just just that even that idea of going, okay, you need to mentally keep track of this as well. Like, yes, you're going to have the template, and yes, we're going to have this, we're going to have this dedicated time, but um, there are things like up to you. You're going to have to remember where you were the last time and what the plan was and. <laughs> working the plan and obviously not being afraid to change the plan and everything because and anything could happen in those inter in that interim space where you don't have seven minutes to go, you know, before. Yeah. Cause <laughs> you know, whatever, it's not, so. not every day do we have that, you know, like someday we don't have that anytime we have like a minute and a half. Okay. So you don't have any class time today to work on that, but like you could still be like thinking about it. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Like, oh, I need to plan this. I can do this. Blah, blah, blah. So just that like running in the background thing. Co-processing. Yeah. 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 So side quest. I like it. Maybe I'll call it science side quest. Boom. That'd be exciting. Oh, huh? Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I like it. <laughs> I like that a lot. Cool. That's perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> well, I guess I kind of went on a, a side quest uh, this past weekend, uh, exploring northern Arkansas. Um, <laughs> oh, right. <clears throat> nice so I think, weather I think, yeah, for that. So, so I think I, I realized afterwards, I was like, oh, um, we were going to just be doing like day hikes, not like overnight camping, like out and back kind of stuff. So I did not have to... I, cause I remember like I was talking with you and I was like, oh yeah, ha, my back's really going to hurt. But that, my back just hurts when I sneeze weirdly yeah. these days. So like, like so, yeah, you did give the impression that you were like camping I'm, in the wilderness. I, I should. you said things like camping with them. <laughs> so oh, like, okay. Was- well, <laughs> if I said that, that was, that was a mistake. Um, uh, we did stay in like a tiny house cabin on a hill in our, North Arkansas. So like, Kind of quasi camping. Kind of. Okay, my bed- all right. Okay. This sounds much better than uh, yes. Tent in the forest yes. in the <laughs> freezing last weekend. It was, it was like literally negative degrees in my yes, sling. <laughs> it was. It was not fun. Uh, I. It was snowing for a little bit up where we were in Arkansas. Like not didn't stick oh anywhere, gosh. but yes, it was. It was like freezing, like freezing drizzle, and up there the roads are obviously not um <laughs> conducive <laughs> to this because we were along the gravel that's what they're, they're yeah, dirt. well we <laughs> we were out right at the precipice of diving down into the buffalo national river right yeah. of that entire riverway and i had forgotten it was what okay, an this, actual cliff that falls off of yes right you're it's just ridic- driving and all of a so sudden weird you see you see a sign, it just says 11% grade, and that is definitely undershooting some of these things, where it's like, this is, the, like, the road just goes down, like, straight down the mountain. I have, and I have memories of hiking down on that Buffalo River somewhere. Yeah. Right? And, like, looking up, and there's just, like, this giant vertical cliff face with a waterfall. I'm like, where did that come from? What is, yeah, what is, that? <clears throat> why is that in Arkansas? Yes! <laughs> We, some of the road cuts it's so <laughs> weird and like it just literally plummets down in this like huge thing like the geography down there is insane and the is. roads the roads they were like this they basically were like there is not enough dynamite in the world to make a road cut through this <laughs> we're nope. just laying the road on top of this hill down you go good luck hope you have brakes like that yeah. is and you don't what so, you did and then co- <clears throat> like seriously you go down into the valley for the for the river and it is just both sides and yes we were going up one and i looked down and yes those those sheer bluffs just hundreds of feet tall just going yeah. sh- straight up and then a nice rolling hillside right alongside it and you're like you what came up yeah, it's like where did this come from how how so this was um you don't call it the natural state for nothing. Right? Nope. Like, harumph, harumph, harumph. So what was really funny is we had selected this spot and all three of us, like, Kim, Kyle, and myself sat down and we like, we had Airbnb pulled up. We were finding places and we were like, we need to go places that are far away from each other, from other people and blah, blah. We want to go hiking. Okay, that's fine. And you don't, you don't want to go too far away from other people in Arkansas because it gets real like terrifying real quick right right so which is why we focused on this place because it's like 30 minutes from harrison it's great and like and we start we start and it's like it's a but you go much further south than that and you're in the middle of nothing literally nowhere yeah it's like a huge chunk of the arkansas map is like empty yeah right like, it's and it's like, designated oh, no. like wilderness like i like yeah. wilderness areas I, for people who don't understand national parks are one thing state parks are another like a true wilderness area is a whole other level of desolate nothingness of like yeah like it is it is it is almost like if, if for the unprepared and for people who just stumble into that and think it's a typical hike like 
those are areas where you actually need to be worried <laughs> about, oh, about yeah. things. <clears throat> There's like nothing, like literal nothing. Yeah. It's crazy. Was that the St. Francis Forest or whatever down there? Yeah. Yeah. I pulled up the map. Okay. I yeah. So we, we're north of that still, but like, yeah, pretty but close I mean, to that's it. Like, like when you look at Google Maps, like right below Harrison is just this giant swath of like dark green, which uh-huh. is like, oh, that's a natural forest. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, yep. And there's nothing there. <laughs> yep. So we are, we are staying on the outskirts of this. And what, here's the funny part we are, we plan this. We um, selected the spot. We're like, yeah, great. We'll we'll figure out some trails later, right? That's fine. We'll figure out trails. There's there's trails galore, right? And so oh, yeah. a week before we we're supposed to depart, we're like, okay, everyone, we gap, haven't done any of that. Rank, no, we said we we said everyone needs to go out and find five trails, and we're, we're going to discuss which which ones we're going to hike when we get there. Okay. And I'm looking did at you, these trails. Did you encounter like? Oh, all right. Go ahead. I'll save my question for the end. Hold no, uh, I'm I'm looking at trails, and our goal was not to spend. Plus, the weather was really cruddy. Like we didn't want we it's didn't hold. We didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like I didn't want to get up at seven a.m. to have to go hike all day through like fourteen miles or whatever. To to was this supposed to be enjoyable? So I was trying to pick shorter yeah. things. Like my goal is to find a couple that were maybe three miles and under that we could do maybe one or two in a day. Like that would be much more enjoyable than trying to really huff it through and spend 12 hours on a trail. Like I wasn't, I was not interested yeah. in doing that. No. Right? <laughs> um, no. And I'm finding all these little ones and I, I see this one and I'm like, huh, huh, that, that means that's really familiar. <laughs> what? Yeah. Why, does that, why does that sound so familiar? And then I start looking at photos and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I've hiked this trail. Like, 11 times in my life and, nah. and one of them was with kevin and kyle <laughs> there you go so now it's gonna be two of them and, so, and what was so funny is i didn't say anything about this okay i didn't say anything and then <laughs> i waited till we were at, met everyone at springfield and we're driving south and i'm like you know i, I said did you guys learn anything about where we're headed and they're like no why would you talk about i'm like I have literally driven both of you to this location. <laughs> like, ah. It was, a, it was 15, 16 years ago, maybe 17 years ago. Oh, man. We all, we Jeep all we, power in, in the man, Jeep power. Go. Yeah. Some of the Hills that we were going, Kevin looked at me and went, did we really do this in your Jeep? And I said, yeah, and I have no idea how we made it out alive. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. I don't know how we lived. I have, <laughs> I have not the foggiest idea how we didn't die or end up on the side of a road because that thing didn't have brakes it was kind of underpowered with its larger tires like okay it was not kind of underpowered it was very underpowered it did have brakes ish though it's fine it did. Uh, so anyway, yeah we, we went to we went to the lost valley which is like am. i was like so like mad at myself because i'm like compton ponka what and then it was only when i started to look at the road did my brain start to from a map? Did my brain start to hook uh, together some of the curves and the things? That's true. Well, and the I, word Ponca is not the, the first thing that I would have remembered, right? Like that would have been like a very much later thing. I was like, what? What is this? What's happening? I don't know. <laughs> no, because I remember because I remember because you come through Ponca and it, you either go to Baxter or you go to Jasper, and oh yeah, we always went to. Baxter, right to the, the right, whatever. Anyway, I don't, I don't always hook to the right. You go through Ponca, the little tiny town right there at the bottom of a massive, again, like fifteen percent road. Yeah, like <laughs> you just bottom out into this thing, come, and then you come through this little sleepy tiny town, and then you hook to the right, and then the river and the floodplains over on your left, and then you turn into the driveway to go to mm. uh, Lost Valley. And so we pull up to this thing, and. On one hand, it was like exactly what I remember. I don't know if you've ever had the situation of like it was exactly how I remembered it, but it was all new to some extent. Like, ah, like, okay, like yes. me having visited there so many times did not impact anything that I experienced there. It was, I mean, I. I had a ridiculous grin on my face the entire time we were hiking mm. because it was, I, I just could not 
it, it was so enjoyable. Like I, I was a little worried of like, oh, we've been here before. Like, okay, like maybe we should find someplace else to go or go hike someplace different or blah blah. Yeah, I'm but so that's glad. A very long time ago. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am so glad we didn't. It was so much fun. Everything was also like ex- exactly like I remembered it, but I enjoyed it like it was for the first time. Uh, and I, yeah. it was great. It was great. We went through the little like that little pool area one of those mm. first and you have to it's got the three cut and you hike up like over the moss and get up yeah. into the the hole and you hike back through the hole and that takes you on the other side of the little hill and you scramble up the the uh the the river bed as yeah. like i mean when you sent me that picture i knew immediately where you were <laughs> i don't know really how from like a boulder in yeah. a pool of water but i was I, like hey i know where that is <laughs> Right, like, like everything was so uh, just <laughs> at the same time so familiar, and I was so happy to be there. While also, uh, every corner, I was like, like, what is it? Like, what, what, what is around this cor- mm-hmm. <laughs> corner? I have to worry. What is it? And then coming up, and it all, like there was water everywhere, so the, the sound was gorgeous, and also. <laughs> The trail was crazy busy. I think there was, there was like 20 cars in the parking lot. Really? And which, which is insane. That is it's, kind of insane. Yeah. That's yeah not... there, there was a guy from California pulled up in his Range Rover, jumped out and with his five kids and was doing stuff and all these things. I was <laughs> of like, course. why, why are you here? Like, what? What's going Who on? Knows? <sighs> uh, and there was like a big school group and all sorts of stuff going on. So in the world. Oh, I know. I was like, I was like, we are, uh, uh, we are, there is no cell phone coverage. The best cell phone in the world. There's no coverage here. Like, oh no, like none. So it's like, it's super remote. And I just don't, I just don't think of this being like the hiking place, but also I was like, it's also really cool to hike. So great. Glad we're all out here. Plus, if my out of shape butt falls down a crevice, at least I can holler and somebody will hear me. I'm sure there are other people here. So right. that's good. Hooray. Somebody can help Kevin and Kyle rescue me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we try, I tried to be in the moment and just experience that. Um, and, uh, but uh, found out taking all sorts of photos and videos and all sorts of stuff. And then we got up to the the cave and I was like, well, we have to go back in the cave. Like we have to I mean, go back in the cave. Uh, and I turn and um, I say, okay, guys, pull out your flashlights. And Kyle's like, I have my phone. And I'm like, Kevin's like, I didn't bring a flashlight. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm glad you brought a Boy Scout along because I have flashlights yeah, for everybody and extra boom. batteries. <laughs> so who's boss? <laughs> and I wasn't even intending to go into the... I didn't even know of Cave, right? Because we were going to decide where we're going. But I was like, we're going to be in the middle of Arkansas. Of course, I'm going to need flashlights. Like, I need flashlights to, in Arkansas. That's true. To see myself. Plus, now I'm like, oh, if I get up in the middle of the night, I might want a flashlight just to make sure I don't stub my toe on a dresser. Or, like, or, or make sure there's no like giant Arkansas spider or something weird down there. Like Exactly. Or if I have to run to the car and to yeah. get something, like, I don't want to be eaten by Ann Bear. So, exactly. yep. We, we went through and... um. It's one of those feelings of it's one of those of like just it's so ingrained in my brain of getting of of sitting down in the back and turning off the light and just like experiencing that darkness, the deafening thunderous sound of that that waterfall waterfall. right there. Yeah. And this it had just rained considerably the night before. So ah, there was, so it was roaring a, through there. a lot so hard that when you first enter the cave back into that back cavern, it, it took you a little while to figure out how to breathe with the immense change of air pressure as it was oh, thundering. Yeah. Down. Like it was like thumping against your chest and literally you could you, <laughs> it was like, <gasps> like <laughs> trying to figure out yeah. how to breathe until you could bring it under control and just like the overwhelming sense of like the ground is vibrating. The air is getting knocked out of me. Sprays going everywhere. It's a sensory. It's a one's like such a sensory overload, but also oh, yeah. like you can't help but sense 
everything going on in that moment. Mm. And that was so fun. Uh, and hiked out. And the other thing that I re- noticed about this hike of when you first start walking, the trail is really like civilized. It's very, um, it's, they have gravel out there in the parking lot. You come mm-hmm. in and then the way route we take where you don't stay on the trail for very long, right? You go up through that little pool and up through yeah. that little hole. It was like being teleported into another world, right? Because you crawl up through that thing and you come out on the other side and it's just a boulder field and you're scrambling over boulders. There's water coming around. It completely transforms. And then on your way back down, it's like you've just experienced this, this like, I don't need like this biblical level of, of what of violence from the water crashing <laughs> and the sounds coming in and you leave that and you're like, well, everything else is going to seem kind of boring, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? And then with it, because it's not, like the, the hike is only like 0.7 miles in, like it's not that far and you very quickly descend at a rapid rate and then you're back on a gravel road and then you're in a parking lot and you're like, what the heck did I just experience? Like it just, yeah, it's, a, it's wild, right? Like it just, kind of oh, weird. it was Roaring so cool. River is like that kind hmm. of right. Like down here, so yeah. like there's a couple of the trails that are like they're much more well kept and like traily, right? And then like the one, like the fire tower one, like the big long one, it's just like once you get back there, it's like where. I'm just in the middle of the woods. Like, I don't, like, there's, what in the world is happening? Yeah. <laughs> like, even to start that, when you have to, like, scramble up this, like, huge, like, rock face, you're like, what? What? Who put, why? Whatever. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, how is this conducive to walking? What? Who decided this was the place to go? Mm. <clears throat> That's funny. I'm yeah. glad it went well. I'm glad you did not get stuck in a cave also. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's one of those of like, I don't think I'm going to get stuck in a cave. And then like but, when you're going through those really skinny passages, you're like, like I'm all of a sudden, stuck in a cave. like, yeah, like <laughs> those intrusive thoughts, like you just can't help but have those where you're oh, like, no. those I'm going to get stuck in a cave. I don't like, like those. This is, I am going to get stuck in a cave. Like I am like a rock is going to fall behind me or in front of me or like <laughs> on me. Like what? Oh no. <laughs> so those were fun. Um, and then we, we wrapped that up and we had time for one more hike. I am uh, sorry for the listeners. I don't remember the name of where this thing was because my, <laughs> um, the phone didn't work. Clearly. No. Arkansas. That's how it works. <laughs> Central Arkansas. No go zone. For no, we had, we had a paper map and we had marked out these places where we were going to go. Cause we knew once we descended from the cabin into the, the area, we weren't going to get anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but, we we found it and I, I don't remember the name and this is why. This is why I you should have I, brought your shortwave radio. Dad could have guided you in from the barn. He right? could have. <laughs> he could he would have he, could. he would have loved that. <laughs> I but the reason I don't remember the name of this place is because the moment I heard the name, my brain switched it to Herkheimer Falls, which is from the sleep book by Dr. Seuss. Where the uh, Herkheimer Falls, where the Great River rushes and crashes down crags and great gargling gushes. Like, that's yes. what my brain's. And it, the name is like Frankenmeyer or Frankfurter or something uh, like that. But my brain said Herkheimer. And so uh, I, I only know this location as Herkheimer. And, and is this it is not Herkimer? 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 Here, hold on. Let me go I mean, to the library. With, I guess. You what? Anyway, sorry. I didn't know. <clears throat> no, you have me questioning. It may be Herkimer. Uh, hold on. If I go to the sleep book here, well, I'm not googling anything. I am, in fact, looking at the sleep book, which is right I've over turned here. Turned around, and grabbed, <laughs> turned around and grabbed it. It's here. No, it's not that. Yep, here it is. Very flipping the pages. Um, it's in the beginning, is it? It is. No, it's Herkheimer. H e r k hyphen h e i m e r Herkheimer. I couldn't remember. Anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> mysterious waterfall and yeah. so, Arkansas. Well, so here's here's how this trail goes. You park on the opposite side of the road in a gravel pullout, and you're on a blind curve, and you have to run across 
Naturally. Uh, this is a very yeah. Arkansas thing to do. This happens a lot. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> when you run across, and the start of the trailhead, it looks like a dirt, two-lane dirt track. This uh, is how this is how the devil's backbone thing is, right? It's like state highway, state highway, state highway, like teeny tiny single track path turn off. That's the trailhead right yeah. there. Like you're like, if you don't, you're going to miss it. Like, yes. Like, <laughs> yes. But this one, you can't turn down the dirt track because that is it's there's no vehicles allowed. So you have to know. Not only is this teeny tiny dirt track on the left not a turn, but it is the start of the trailhead. The only place to park for the next mile and a half on this road is on my right immediately right now. And I have to turn. <laughs> and so parked the car, jumped out, sprinted across the road, got on the track. And it's like the backside of somebody's property. Like, you know, the parks, the parks were like, we need to have a lease with you, like some an operating agreement that we have access here. You hike down this, you go across, you walk through a, a power line cut, and underneath it, you hit an, a, a spring. And then it looks like you're supposed to go forward, but you, you don't. Uh, you, you're not actually supposed to go the way that it looks like you're supposed to go. You're just supposed to turn left and hike the spring. And you go down the spring, and up until this point, you're going over like grassy knolls and everything. As soon as you hit the spring, you notice boulders everywhere, small boulders like everywhere throughout this thing. But there's all there. It's all old. So there's moss and there's giant trees growing up through them. It looks it looks like it's out of a painting. It, it looks magical. Like it was like there are fairies in here. Like I know there are like this is where they would go. That's the pool they would drink from. Like I know this. And you walk and this thing, it just goes like, down. I imagine you walking like spinning in circles, looking for all the bears, like where, <laughs> knocking where on rocks. Right, that's bear you aware. Just, right? Yeah. Do you have your bell? Uh, we did have a bell, and I was Aha! talking. I was talking very loudly, um, as I would as want to do. There you go. And you walk this, and you walk on this little path, and it was very different than the Lost Valley one, where it's like, oh, I think like one person comes down this place. Like, yeah. <laughs> a year like this is like i am pushing away branches from my face it's the trail maintenance guy that's who comes out <laughs> yes he does and all he he doesn't maintenance anything he just looks at it and goes cool yep. and walks like, away still here right. yeah, kick some rocks around <laughs> all right that's better and you keep this little thing over on your right and then all of a sudden you start to hear trip more like heavier water and you're like oh so then then the the drops from the little waterfall start to get bigger and that starts to spread out a little bit and then you hear a waterfall and i'm not kidding brandon this thing it's perfectly level and like dropping little by little by little by little but then it plummets like 60 feet just straight down see it's, it's, that's how it works it's so weird and then it plummets and then you look down and it just continues trickling on at a normal rate just off that way yeah and, <laughs> and it's just, uh, this gorge is just there Right, yeah. like, and you're, you're, you're like, where, where did this come from? <laughs> like, and you can walk on either side of it and like turn and look back at this, but it's like just a massive drop off. Mm -hmm. And I tried to find this place on a Google Map, but the thing is, it's so heavily forested you can't see this from. Above. Oh yeah, probably not. Right, like. It's crazy because this thing, this river, this little stream, it's not that big. Like, it's really not. But there are huge overgrowths. And, over, and I was like, surely you'll be able to see the massive drop off point. No, totally covered completely from the air. Just from the area. You had mm. no idea this, this thing existed. And yet it's gorgeous. And it's just out there in the middle of nowhere. And it makes you think of like, gosh, like if, if this is here, like what? What else is still what else is out there sitting on somebody's back 40, right? That they they know they've known about. Oh yeah. Right. It's just, oh my gosh, it's so so great. And then we went back and again, the, both of these hikes, each of them were under this one was like half a mile in. Like that's all this hike was. And it that's was crazy. just like the trail takes you to the waterfall and then you just turn around and walk back. But it's like, okay, like sweet. <laughs> that's nuts. It's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So we uh, survived. Okay, and... Good job being the proper Boy Scout, being prepared for all the things. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was like, oh, I bet none of you, how many of you, which one of you has your field first aid kit packed and ready? 
None of you, I presume. Oh, the answer was goodness. none. None. So I had to I was like, well, I have enough supplies for if one of us dies, so hopefully it's not the one who knows how to use this. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you're going hiking in Arkansas, you need some first aid. Like it's just like there's thorns and like boulder fields and like you just it's good to have. Oh. Yeah. Like I in- seem to recall the time that I one time we were in Boy Scouts when we were hiking on the Buffalo River. Somebody like, oh, I know exactly who it was. Uh, they shall rename, uh, remain nameless uh, on the air, but I'll tell you later. Sure. Uh, they like lacerated their hand with their knife, like <sighs> doing something ridiculous. And like, they, <laughs> it was so bad that like <clears throat> they could, they, they had a hard time walking out. They cut their hands so bad. So wow. they had to do the thing where we people, a bunch of people were taking turns, like porting their bag <gasps> for them. Like they couldn't carry their stuff out because they, they cut their hands so bad and they like lost a bunch of blood. <laughs> yeah. Dang. So they deported it. Like they either like carried it out, like on a stick between some people. Right. Or like they mm-hmm. te- kept tech. Te- Words is hard today. Folks uh, <clears throat> took turns. Like carrying it for for him for a while, it was it was crazy. So yeah, like know. these little <laughs> things, like not little things, but all of a sudden a minor, even like a minor, like twisted ankle. All of a sudden oh, yeah. you're like, oh, what do In the I? Sheer I, cliffs of Central Arkansas, right? It's like, <laughs> right, like how? What? What is this? So that was another reason why we were like short. <laughs> like this is not none oh, of yeah. us are ready for like our prepared like physically or whatever for like wilderness at oh this no point. because like it's well so see here's the other thing is hikes like this in arkansas it's it's deceptive because you also have to you have to take into account a lot of vertical feet yes right so like oh i only hiked half a mile horizontally <laughs> horizontally <laughs> yeah. vertically up. though yes <laughs> oh boy that is that, that's a good point. Uh, it really like, elongates your time because you got to go up and down and uh-huh. over all kinds of stuff. So it's there's some not <laughs> insignificant climbing down there. Yes, yeah. So again, we were like, we want this easy. Like this isn't going to be strenuous. Like I would like to do something like that eventually, but like given what we were prepared for, it was like yeah. these definitely are going to be really <laughs> short. Being as if the boys didn't even bring their flashlight. Right. I was like, Come on. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm sitting here like, okay, how much is a satellite phone? Because nah. that's what I <laughs> can that can I get a satellite phone and just like activate it for the short time? Like, how does this kind of thing work? I don't that's think where, that's how that works. I think it's a longer commitment than I think uh, so. Three days, right? I think so, maybe. But it was like, you know, I was going through and because <clears throat> I knew we weren't going to have any service, I did the thing. Pro tip for anybody who uses Google Maps. Go to Google Maps in the upper left hand corner, hit the hamburger menu, drop it down. There's a little menu that says offline maps on your phone. Click this and you can select a geographic area to download offline map data to your phone so you can still get turn by turn directions, even if you don't have cell data. This is very handy. I, yes. It's great. It'll even save like some. Uh, like locations or like restaurants or things like that. So you can even search mm. a little bit in there. Yeah. Um, I strongly recommend anybody who's traveling. Like this is one thing that um, like traveling overseas or just traveling to places like in North Arkansas where there's no cell service. <laughs> so overseas. <laughs> overseas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I went and I, I found a couple free trials of like that country hiking apps of like oh great like these are good like these are good trail topo maps like this mm. these are perfect like downloading those offline data all that stuff because you just don't know like what and you, even then like you can't prepare for everything but it's like gotta i need to be able to get somewhere <laughs> at the end of the day True. so <clears throat> it was good uh next to our cabin was uh, a donkey named uh pedro and oh. uh, a horse named slide sly something like that something <laughs> something like that they say they said hi a lot <laughs> so very nice yeah yeah and the road the road getting to our camp 
our cabin. It was one of those. I'm like, we're driving in our SUV and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I have this thing. Cause it was like also raining and it's just red mud and rocks everywhere. And like, oh yeah. Like it's really like rocking and rolling a few of these things. And I pass by this house and towards like up at the top of this thing that we just climbed up. And I feel like we just scratched our way all the way up here, this thing. And, <laughs> and I look over and there's this like, <laughs> <laughs> like trapped out Ford Focus <laughs> yeah. sitting there like like with a body kit and I'm like how how did you get here <laughs> where did you come from <laughs> it is pretty mysterious I don't know I have no idea how I don't know thing. right let's man. just teleport like I don't know like I'm so confused but <laughs> No. Yes. That's uh, great. I like it. <laughs> it was so funny. It was so funny. <laughs> oh. So yes, on our next our next man, our family gathering next is gonna be so lit because we're gonna make we're gonna have we're gonna have homemade pasta. We're gonna we're gonna be cooking stuff. We're gonna be we're all going to go hike at Lost Valley together. I've decided uh by fiat. And, uh, uh those are those are two very it's very far away from where the pasta making will happen. I know that's one, <laughs> that's one day. Pasta making is the other day. It's not the same. Oh, day. okay. Because it, yeah, it's still like an hour and forty five minutes south of Springfield, so it's it's a minute to get there. Yeah, uh, it's a bit, it's a bit far. But like, yeah, well, it's just all. It's I've it's already planned out. It's fine. It's fine. Oh man, I definitely don't own hiking boots anymore. So <laughs> this will be a problem. Oh, well, I, yeah, and I was like, well, I've got to. I get hiking boots for the kids and whatever, so we can go back to the cave. And I'm excited. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll do Adidas running shoes work. Yeah, just have another pair. Okay. Okay. Fine. I have this pair. Okay. Of shoes. That's all let's, I got. Let's have another. Maybe get some flip flops for the for the no, right back. No. Oh, maybe they get soggy. I guess. That's what I'm saying. Just. <clears throat> <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More that's yeah, so that that was the adventure. Survived. Uh, Very adventurous adventure. Oh. Get out and yeah, get out and hike. Yeah. It's good stuff. There you go. Okay. Well, uh that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. good. Okay, well, <laughs> until next time. Yes indeed. Yes indeed. Yeah. Uh, yes. Love you. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.